In this video, I'm going to show you 20 ways in which you could possibly save money whilst making your mosaics. And no, I'm not going to throw in a free set of steak knives either. So anyway, let's get into it and I'll show you that right now. One of the best places to go scavenging are op shops and thrift stores. I find that the best bargains are found at church and school op shops rather than the large chain store type ones. And what I also like is that you can find so many different things and each op shop carries something different. And also people tend to donate some really good items to op shops that you wouldn't think about. But when you go in there, it's amazing what you can actually find. Garage sales and car boot sales can also be a lot of fun and you can find really good bargains at these places. Unfortunately, sometimes you have to search through a lot of junk to get to the bargain, especially when it comes to car boot sales. But that's part of the experience and part of the fun. Sometimes you can pick up really broken bits of jewelry that you might want to use in a mixed media piece. There's a surprise to be had at either one of these places. You just may have to do a little bit of searching to get to that bargain. Another fun place to go looking for things is also curbside council pickups. Now that's where homeowners will put their junk on the nature strip out the front of their house and the council comes along and picks it up. Now they can be really fun to look through and yes there is a lot of junk in a lot of cases but being into mosaics I'm sure that many people here will be able to look at a piece and they will be able to upcycle it into something really wonderful. Now it is advisable to check with your local council to see if they have any restrictions on you taking anything or looking through any of those things that are on the nature strip. It is also advisable if you see something to actually go in and ask the homeowner who put it out there in the first place to see if they wouldn't mind you taking it. And in most cases, I'm sure that wouldn't be an issue. But it is very, very wise to just check with your local council because I know that some restrictions do apply with some councils. But you can pick up some really, really good things at these curbside council pickups. One of the places I like going into are the antique stores. Now I know there's not as many around as what there was 15 and 20 years ago, but there's still a few around. And I find that many of the antique stores, when they buy bulk items of things or estate purchases, they generally also get uh, chipped plates and chipped cups. And also uh, people sometimes going into their stores will break something and they will put it in a box and put it aside and they may take it to the recycle bin, but also they will put it in a box rather than throw it out in case someone does want those pieces in there. So if you make yourself known, generally you can pick up a lot of broken or chipped crockery and vases and various other things at no charge because they're more than happy to give it to someone who's actually going to use it. Tile stores can be a good resource as well for materials, but I find that Australia has a problem at the moment, and that is that a lot of tile stores will carry 50 shades of white, 40 shades of grey, and probably about 20 shades of black. We don't have a huge range of coloured tiles here, because at this point in time, they're not really in at the moment here in Australia. But tile stores do carry, at times, discontinued items, rejects, broken tiles, they even carry slate in some cases and they make really good backers. So you may want to check out your local tile store just to see what they're carrying. And they also have sometimes backer boards where the tiles are actually mounted onto the backer board so people can look at them. And if the tile store is getting rid of their discontinued items, they will probably get rid of that backer as well, which means that then you can take those tiles off and use them in your mosaics. So check your local tile store and just see what they've got because there's quite a few of them around. Recycle centres are certainly worth a look. They generally carry tiles, crockery, jewellery, clean rags, photo frames, old windows, a whole range of items for inside and outside. So you may be able to pick up some bargains for the garden that you might want to mosaic over. Certainly well worth a look because people are bringing things into those recycle centers usually on a daily basis. So if you have one in your area or you may have a bit of a drive to a recycle center, it's probably worth going to because you're bound to pick up a really good bargain on an item that you never thought you would find. 
Another place where you can pick up the odd bargain is your local craft store. Now I'm not a fan of craft stores because I find they don't really carry what I want. So I find I don't really go into craft stores all that often. But of course it depends what you're going to be making or creating. So it's always worth checking them out anyway and especially when they're having their discounts or their coupons or their sales on. Now here in Australia we have Lincraft and Spotlight uh, as well as online craft stores and in the US you have Michaels, Hobby Lobby and of course dollar stores as well as other online stores. So they are worth checking out from time to time especially if you can use a coupon code to get quite a considerable amount of percentage off. If you're wanting weedy board or marmox board offcuts, then check out your local tiler because the chances are if he's renovating a bathroom, he could be using one of those substrates. And of course, when he buys these substrates, he needs to cut it in so it fits into certain size areas, which means that he's going to have offcuts that he may be throwing away, but he may actually give to you. So it's definitely worth a trip or a phone call and have a chat to him. One of the places I like looking for things is in secondhand building yards. You can find old windows, you can find slate, you can find pavers, you can find glass bricks. There's just so many different things that you can find and the stock generally changes quite frequently. So it's well worth checking out your local secondhand building supply yard because you never know what they're going to be getting in. I really like working with polystyrene to create three-dimensional items for the garden and if you're like me and you like working with polystyrene as well or maybe you're looking at getting into using polystyrene then you probably are very well aware of how expensive those big blocks of polystyrene can be. So I like to try and buy them the most cost effective way I can and in some cases the manufacturer that actually makes the polystyrene will also recycle it for you as well which means that he's likely to get in those huge big blocks of polystyrene because they're used generally in civil engineering projects and then they want to get rid of the polystyrene so they'll take it back to their source of manufacture which is really good to know. But that's to your advantage because you can sometimes pick them up quite cheap there. Now other places to look for them is also Facebook Marketplace and Gumtree because I've seen quite large polystyrene blocks advertised on those two and quite frequently. You may want to check in your local area if you have a person that works in ceramics that has a kiln or perhaps you've got a local pottery teacher in the area that teaches classes because the chances are these people may have some broken pottery that can yield really interesting pieces and shapes and colours. So it's definitely well worth checking out your local area to see if you have either of these people in it so that you can pick up a box of broken pottery that you could use in your mosaics. Now another good area where you can really save money is if you're looking at buying terracotta and concrete pots or bird baths that have cosmetic imperfections in. These can go for a fraction of their retail price. Now I'm not talking about pieces with cracks in or anywhere where the structural integrity has been compromised. I'm only talking about pieces where they've got blemishes in the surface or as I said before cosmetic imperfections. Now these can be found at times from hardware retailers and also chains such as Bunnings and I've seen it where Bunnings has bought in big lots of pots or bird baths and because of these imperfections or they're not quite right then I've seen them reduced dramatically. And because you're going to cover the piece with mosaics it really isn't going to matter because you're not going to see those imperfections. So it's definitely well worth considering next time you're in a hardware store or chain just check out the area to see if they have an area for imperfections. Now if you're looking at mosaicing onto flat rocks, one place that you really need to look at is a landscaping supply yard as they generally have a really good range to choose from and are quite cheap. I went into one yard about oh, 12 months ago and I chose a rock out and I thought look I might be charged five or ten dollars for it but it, it, the guy just gave it to me and it was a reasonable size rock and it was really nice and flat. Now in some cases it's really good to do that than it is to walk down a creek and pick up rocks because in some cases you might need local council permits to actually do that. So check out your local landscaping supply yard to see what they have on offer. 
If you're lucky enough to live near a beach, and I'm lucky enough because I actually live near quite a few beaches, then what I like to do is when the tide is fully out, I like to be walking along and picking up shells and beach glass and broken crockery. It's amazing what you can find when the tide has gone right out. Now you may have to check with your local council to seek permission because some councils do not allow you to pick up anything off the beach and take home with you. So check out your local council and if you have a beach, Go for a walk along that beach because it's going to be amazing what the beach has washed up. You can also look at contacting stained glass artists. Sometimes they will have boxes of scrap stained glass and generally they're using semi-transparent or opaque stained glass and that can be a good way where you might be able to pick up some extra pieces. Also uh, suppliers that also supply stained glass but they also run classes. Sometimes they sell off their boxes of scrap glass quite cheaply. So that's another couple of areas that you can look into. Now not every stained glass artist is going to get rid of their stained glass because they could already be using it for mosaics or they might want to use it in future projects. But certainly I think it's worth asking if you're looking for some scraps of stained glass. Your local glazier will also come in really handy because they deal in broken mirror and clear glass. And because you're working mosaics, you don't really need large offcuts. So hopefully the glazier will be able to help you out with small offcuts that he's no longer going to need or is not going to be of any use to him. So hopefully he'll give you those or at least give you a very, very good price because otherwise he's probably going to throw them out. So it's well worth considering calling into your local glazier and just having a chat to him. If you use marble, granite or limestone or perhaps you're thinking about using those materials then it might pay to actually reach out to your local stonemason if you have one in the area. Now if you don't, you might have a kitchen benchtop manufacturer in the area that actually uses similar materials for benchtops. I think it's worth reaching out to either of these people because you may end up with materials or offcuts of materials that have been given to you that you may have not even considered using but could be quite beneficial to you in a mosaic. Another good source of offcuts is builders because they work in so many different substrates when they're on a job. And also builders can sometimes uh, come into their own when they have to pull small windows out or they need to demolish something then they could actually let you know that there's some products coming up that you may be interested in and because they work in MDF and cement sheet and they're pulling things apart they're putting things together and they have the right saws to cut things they can come in quite handy so knowing a couple of builders can be quite beneficial to a mosaic artist Tempered glass or crash glass can be quite popular and can be found on most tabletops and even some shelf units that someone may be throwing out in the local trash or recycling centre. It's always good when you're going around salvage yards to also have a look in case you see some nice shelves but you don't want the shelves but you may want the glass. So it's always good to keep your eyes open and have a look for tabletops and glass units because the glass is usually not tinted and it's usually quite clean. Now another way to save money is to take advantage of online specialist mosaic resellers because they offer codes and clubs and you are able to receive extra benefits and discounts which of course is money in your pocket. So whenever you're shopping just keep an eye out for those because they can also save you money. Avoid buying cheap electrical items such as stained glass grinders that do not meet your country's electrical safety standards. These standards are there to help protect you from dubious products that are sold online where you could receive an electric shock. Purchasing items that do not meet these standards may also avoid any insurance claim that you may need to make. In many cases buying electrical items that are cheap and do not meet your country's electrical safety standards will generally cost you so much more in the long run. We all love a bargain, but it's generally buy beware if you are not purchasing from a reputable retailer. One that can offer you customer service, but more importantly, the customer support should something go wrong. These are always a good reason to pay a little bit extra for. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've taken something away from it. If you have any great saving tips uh, when you're creating mosaics, put them down in the bottom of the comments section on YouTube. I'll be interested in having a read and I'm sure others will too. And I'll see you in the next video. Enjoy.